Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Richard Downs with the Sleep Balance Academy, and I have special guests on the line with me tonight. Uh, the speakers are myself, uh, Dr. Uh, Kedar Prasad, Dr. Dr. Russ Court, and Joannette Bibesheimer, MS with biochemistry degree. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, just, I'm going to introduce Dr. Prasad first. I'll have uh, uh, Dr. Court and, and, and Joannette, I'll go ahead. And Jet, can we call you Jet? Yes, you can. Jet, Jet. <laughs> Jet, I love the name Jet. Jet will also introduce herself a little bit, and then uh, we'll get into the uh, particulars of the science on this uh, radiation protection that I, I sent out a preliminary uh, video about. Dr. Prasad is a uh, professor at University of Colorado uh, a School of Medicine for 30 years, 30 plus years, actually. He was director of the Vitamin Cancer Research Project there. He's a former president of the International Society of Cancer and Nutrition. He's a member of the British Medical uh, Society. And uh, he's, has, and he's a Nobel, he was on the Nobel Prize nominee for candidates in medicine. Uh, he's the world's uh, first radiation biology, biology PhD. He's been awarded seven U.S. patents on micronutrients. And we're going to explain what micronutrients is. He discovered the anti-cancer potency of vitamin E, succinate. Discovered that butyric acid in the small fatty acids formed in the, in the fermented fibers of the gut is an anti-cancer agent. And his works are, include the author and co-author of 32 books. He's published 20, 250 plus peer-reviewed articles. Um, so... This is pretty amazing, and I, and I don't think there's any other company that can that can talk about radiation biology. As a matter of fact, first person who has ever had a PhD in radiation biology. So we're speaking to the expert on this subject when it comes to what we're talking about tonight. I want to say a few things about myself personally. Um, <clears throat> I uh, am a... Uh, a cancer survivor. I've had lymphoma. I had lymphoma uh, about um, in about 2009. I was diagnosed with uh, marginal node B cell lymphoma. I went through 20 sessions of radiation uh, with my face and chest plastered to a slab and rotated in a machine. Um, the last session was not just gamma radiation, but uh, I was radiated with beta particles uh, as well. Um, it knocked out my sal salivary glands, it created a dry mouth, and also I lost my ability to taste food for a while. I asked the doctor after this uh, episode, uh, what were my chances of uh, how much the radiation would bother me in the future? And he predicted that, well, if, uh, you know, probably the lymphoma will come back. That was told to me that it will come back. It is a... Um, a resistant cancer, it, and it doesn't react very well to chemotherapy, and also that the radiation that I had could produce uh, um, a, a, a sarcoma, muscle sarcoma. So these two two tip, particular types of cancer uh, are something that we're watching for. But I decided to do something about it, and one of the things that I've been doing because I became interested in this product because Dr. Uh, Russ Court introduced me to this formula was the fact that it had scientific studies behind it, real science, not just anecdotal science. What I've seen out there on supplement peddlers is that they have a formula like a multi multi-formula and they'll increase a vitamin C or a vitamin A and they'll uh, tell the, and, and they'll tweak their little uh, their little formula a little bit so that they can claim something about it that is different than other multivitamin formulas and micronutrient formulas uh, just so they can have a little different formula than somebody else has flimsy science behind it, and they don't have the intricacy of the interaction of these mi micronutrients and how they should be actually proportioned in a certain certain way and in certain uh, in a certain structures. And this is what's lacking. When I ask you why we leave out certain things like copper, manganese, and, fer and iron, they're going to explain that tonight. And how many vitamins do you see that do that? They actually leave out nutrients. Uh, you're going to understand why tonight. Um, I introduced the, the, the guest tonight. I want you also to know that this is not a multi-level marketing company. It does have a retail component, 
is tailor-made for professional offices. I think that's really important. Um, I, I, I think that a lot of multi-level companies are good. And some of them are very good. Some of them are less good. But they, uh, they tend to have a lot of increased price and hype around their products. Um, I'm going to also talk about the fact that I've had uh, CT scans, many, many CT scans, and a lot of radiation involved in that. And also that children are more susceptible to radiation than adults are. Um, you could, I could literally take and crush up cockroaches, extract the oil, put it on the market, and call it a weight loss product. And I can swear to you, I'll get 500 testimonials saying it's the best thing since sliced bread. It happens all the time. Um, so I'm going to, Russ is going to show you an anecdotal evidence for how we, we use this product on a diabetic toe. And you're going to see something very, very spectacular. I don't mean that I, anecdotal is necessarily always bad, but if you've got real science, you got something even better. And that's what we have tonight. So Dr. Prasad, thank you for being on the on the show tonight. Your product has uh, given me hope for preventing the reoccurrence of my cancers. And I think that um, from what I see and how I feel, I believe that that's going to happen for me. So thank you for being on this uh, tonight, Dr. Prasad. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and where we want to go with these questions? Uh, thank you, Dr. Downs. Yeah. First, you know, the... Uh, it is not only the occurrence of, of a, a initial primary tumor that in case you, you're, but also new cancer, like you mentioned. But also third issue is that uh, also it causes in non-neoplastic diseases, increased risk. Uh, for example, you know, um, certain kind of necrosis of the muscle cell and the brain is involved, necrosis of the brain tissue. So also there are some risk of non-cancer-related damage to your system long-term, 10, 15 years later. Yeah. So the way you have suggested, made made a point that the, but what is not experimentally known or nobody has any clinical trial, but from the data from animal, it suggests that taking a micronutrient together with a good diet can reduce the risk of some of those things that you are talking about whether it is a neoplastic or non-neoplastic diseases. And so, so I think you, at least your personal situation that you are taking action on is, is correct. Thank you. So tell us the difference between a micronutrient. Dr. Downs? Dr. Downs? We yeah. wanted to read the um, FDA disclaimer. Oh, if we could. I just want to read this real quickly so that it's in the beginning of the, of the Thank program. You. These yeah. statements and comments have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This information is for educational purposes only. Engage, the micronutrient company, does not claim that our products diagnose, treat, cure, heal, or prevent any diseases or injuries. Engage's products do, however, address our deficiencies and provide the nutrients we are lacking. Nothing said here today is intended to be a substitute for treatment or an appointment with your primary health care provider. Thank you, Russ. Appreciate you doing yeah. it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, so so I think, you know, as you know, that in most cases, radiation-induced, whether it's a cancer and or the late effect of radiation, the two processes are directly involved. Increased oxidative stress and chronic infl inflammation play a central role, not only in a carcinogenesis process, but also in varieties of illness, health issue. And the way we have tested, and it has been tested, our product micronutrient, that it downregulates both uh, increased oxidative stress and in chronic inflammation at the same time. It is very important. They have to be done at the same time in order to risk of um, who are ill health or in this case, uh, diseases. And so so I think this this way it will be okay, but we, but you want to talk with respect to radiation or? Uh, yeah, mostly I, I want to talk about ionizing radiation. Yes. Doctor, because that's what we're focused on tonight. Yeah. yeah. I know there's a lot of other things you do, uh, and uh, but we're going to just focus on this because okay, I'm interested in the dentists and the chiropractors and the health practitioners who are giving x-rays to their patients, yes. how we can protect them. And we can do that with this product. Thank you. Yeah. I think, you know, as you know, that uh, there was a lot of extensive data, and I have written a lot of review, 
And the one probably you may have seen the paper published in the ideology by European scientists that we provided the product to be tested. And uh, it was my previous company. I had a PMC called P Premier Micronutrient Corporation. But, but in, in that case, uh, what they found, one CT scan will deliver one, uh, the 10 MGY, gray, 10 M gray, one CT scan. It varies from five to 20, but average is 10. And it has been shown previously People thought that, well, that kind of low dose has no significant effect. So he, what he did, the experiment first in vitro that gave a radiation, exactly same amount of dose, 10 mGY, and found that there is an increase in the double-strained DNA breaks. And he was measuring by this by immunostaining, so you can stain the cell and they count what, how much damage has occurred. And when he treated that in vitro first, he did a study very nicely, first in vitro lymphocyte culture, human lymphocyte culture. And then he treated them five minutes and 15 minutes before uh, giving radiation, exactly same dose, 10 uh, mGY, and found that by giving the antioxidant mixture of antioxidant, we did not provide a B vitamin because it was not pertinent to radiation protection. Right. based on previous animal studies. And so and so you know just the antioxidant component of micro daily. And so when he gave the uh, before five and 15 minutes before radiation, and then he found there was a in vitro 23% reduction in a double DNA strand breaks. So then he said, okay, I will test in human. So he has about 17 or 20 volunteers both men and women, and gave a, uh, this same preparation uh, one hour before CT scan. And then after that, he took out the, within five, 10 minutes, took out the blood sample, and uh, again, assayed the uh, number of lymphocytes, which was stained with the, uh, showing the uh, double DNA strand breaks. And, uh, and then, he treated the person one hour with antioxidant that we provided one hour before CT scan, and then same thing, did the same type of experiment. Took out the blood, stained the lymphocyte, and then he found 58% reduction in the DNA damage, double DNA strain break. So it was much more efficient than, than in vitro study. Vitro study shows only 23% reduction but human study in volunteer, it was 58% reduction. He did not give the explanation why, but my interpretation is that in vitro system, there is not repair system as efficient as in vivo system. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, uh, when the, you are stimulated the, by giving the antioxidant, when you stimulate the re repair function, DNA repair enzymes, it was more effective in correcting or repairing the DNA damage. And so that was very exciting. This is the first time we have done human study that that, uh, that shows that, uh, and uh, before that it was epidemiology study and things like that, but this was a direct intervention study. And therefore I was very much impressed with that. And of course, as you know, Dr. Downs, that uh, of course high doses of radiation has been very well known in animal study. Uh, we, <clears throat> we found that uh, Excuse me. We found that the uh, in collaboration with NASA in Houston mm -hmm. and the uh, and uh, Russian Academy of Sciences, uh, because they can do there in Russia on larger animals, we can do here more than mice, which we did in collaboration with the Radiobiology Research Institute of Department of Defense. <clears throat> and so here, here is one study we did. Uh, um, uh, in, a, in in they, they performed this study in a in Russia uh, in a rabbit, and rabbit was given a lethal what we call a CNS syndrome dose. In Dr. human, Dr. Prasad, can you see that I put the your actual clinical yeah. studies up on the screen? Can you yeah. see that, Dr. Yeah, Dale? I see. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, okay. it, it, it is you know uh, so uh, so in this case it, uh, this 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 kind of things you can see that. 
um, they were exposed to CNS, central nervous system syndrome. And if you expose that kind of high dose in human, it will be 100% will be that within 24 hours before any other organ gets expressed damage because of the brain damage, they die. In this case, in case of rabbit, all died within four hours with or without antioxidant because it was very powerful. But when the scientists there in Russia did the autopsy, they found you can see the placebo one has a dark shriveled up um, lung. And in this case, you can see that uh, antioxidant treated was maintain the level of structure. And there's a lot of inflammation there. You can see it is red. And so at least certain degree of protection, you can see the hair, but nobody will do this experiment in human or in a mice. And so we did another study was done, uh, which, which was on a uh, uh, sheep. And again, they exposed their, what the dose called intestinal GI syndrome dose. In GI syndrome dose, the uh, human will die within, 100% will be death within two weeks. And in animal model, it can vary from three to seven days. So this sheep was a large animal, was exposed to um, intestine, GI syndrome dose, and they lived about a, a seven days, all died. But when they were orally treated with the antioxidant that we provided it, and scientists from the doctor, uh, Jeff, uh, took from NASA to Soviet Union all these products that we provided because they had a collaboration, NASA in Houston. And so, so then they found that the increase in lifetime, lifespan, from seven days, the sheep survive up to 38 days. That was remarkable that you just by giving antioxidant one dose, you increase the survival time of the sheep who otherwise 100% will die in this case, you, they died all in 38 days. So these are just demonstrate the principle that antioxidant can be a powerful radioprotective agent. So it was nothing new in, 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 in terms of a study, but the fact that it is also true in a larger animal was very interesting. Another interesting, which was very interesting for me, uh, much more, that was in fruit fly. And this study we did in collaboration with the NASA at Moffitt, California. And there, Dr. Bhattacharya, who was in charge of the fruit fly genetics, and since our astronauts might get exposed to, might, not might get, they do get exposed to proton radiation on a lunar surface. And therefore, the, uh, their interest was not X-ray or gamma ray, but proton radiation, which is a, much more effective than X-ray or gamma ray. So in fruit fly genetics, so we collaborated with her, gave the same formula that we tested in a uh, rabbit and sheep and in human. And uh, so normally, uh, fruit fly don't develop tumor. So you see inserted a cancer leukemia causing genes in fruit fly. She was a good molecular biologist. And, uh, and then now they become very susceptible to developing cancer. And so when they, she gave a, uh, irradiated these flies uh, who has mutation, uh, then many of them, very high percentage of them developed cancer. And when this, she treated through semi-solid medium that the fly will eat seven days before radiation and continue to do seven days after radiation, then none of the uh, fruit fly developed cancer. So this is the first evidence that a genetic basis of the disease, in this case was cancer, can be prevented or at least delayed. We cannot extrapolate to human, but at least this gives some idea, some rational that, a, that, a, that it is potentially can be explored. And so, so there is a lot of things we did, did. I don't want to go through all those study that we have in diabetes until you want me to do it. But from radiation point of view, uh, there is so much a diagnostic procedure going on, and this this paper in human and CT scan was published in 2012 in Radiology Journal, which, as you know, is a bible for radiologists. I work in radiology department. I was teaching radiation biology to residents in radiology. So, so how much they respect, and in this journal, but nobody has paid much attention to, unfortunately. And it is not just a CT scan, but also 
um, the any kind of diagnostic procedure which involves X radiation, they should be prevented. And that's why we developed the concept of, like we have in radiology, um, the LRA, as low as reasonable achievable right. in terms of radiation dose. This was that principle. But then we said that by giving micronutrient, we can say PAMARA, protection as much as reasonable achievable. Why we cannot apply this principle as well? Yeah. And so, but it has not filtered as yet in a in in in, in a diagnostic uh, radiologist. And so, give him full screen. Would you join that? Yes. Yeah. Give Dr. Prasad the screen back. Okay. I can I go over the patents real quick before yeah. I take off. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so Dr. Um, Dr. Prasad. So, um. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Jeanette Bevisheimer. I'm a biochemist and um, my graduate work is in environmental science and policy. And I'm the lead clinician of Dr. E, I'm the lead researcher of Dr. EMF, but I have a lot of work. I was a radiation worker because I was a state regulator for the Department of Energy and I used to wear a dissimeter. And I found this product to protect myself over eight years ago. And, and his body of work is second to none. These things are so important. I want to edify Dr. Prasad. I have many of his textbooks, his peer-reviewed works. They are incredible on radiation, radiation biology, neurodegenerative diseases, cancer, diabetes, anti-aging. It is incredible dementia. work. Dementia, well, neurodegenerative diseases. So with that, I wanted to, we have a couple pictures also we want to show, but he did a study um, on type 2 diabetes because there is a connection with the mental world with diabetes. And we have a really great anecdotal, like Dr. Down said. We have um, Dr. Prasad did work on the type two diabetes protection with Walter Reed. Um, it, I'm sure it was quite a large study, but you also have a patent. Dr. Prasad has a patent on the one formulation that had a cumulative of 24 million in research and, and with, 14 clinical studies on one formulation. That formulation has a patent. Um, U.S. patent, so it's the very bottom left, is U.S. patent 7,605-145, dated October 20th, 2009. Micronutrient formulations for the treatment of diabetes mellitus. Okay, okay. And right above that, he also has a patent for this one formulation that he did all of this work on. It took a long time for him to do that. We're gonna walk through in a minute, but he also has a patent, patent number 1049451 dated November 11, 2008, which is the use of a multiple antioxidant micronutrient as systemic biological radio protective agents against potential ionizing radiation risks. As far as I know, it is the only, only multi micronutrient on the market that has its own patent to protect against ionizing radiation. And the point that Dr. Prasad made, for all of us that are radiation workers, those giving imaging, like or like myself, I used to be Dr. Court, did um, upper C, upper cervical for 25 years in x-ray on this call. It is amazing that there is a product that has this patent and this research to do this work. But the Alara, the as as low as reasonable achievable is just like shielding. That's all we had to be able to do that in, in checking my dosimeter. But with the Pamara, which is a biological next step, Dr. Downs, which is the um, the actual, Protection. right? Um, Protection as, reasonable, as much as it is right. achievable. Yes, and it's a novel approach. And that's really what we're talking about here the dosing before and after that next step, which is a biological protection and repair against ionizing radiation. So I wanted to say that Dr. Prasad's work is novel and um, it's groundbreaking for everybody that's on here. So I'll go ahead and take this one off, but I wanted to show that real quick. There you go, Dr. Prasad. Okay, thank you. So uh, Dr. Prasad, I, I know people who have uh, in the past uh, given people, they just dump uh, antioxidants on a person and say it's going to make you better, going to help you against cancer. They might take multivitamins. They might take extra large doses of vitamin C. Uh, they might take extra large doses of vitamin E. Every study I've read on these high dose antioxidants, actually in many of the studies, they say they potentiate and make the cancer worse. 
Can you tell us why that's happening? Yeah, I think, you know, I don't know how you define high. We have defined, the, for example, our, uh, um, our formulation, say EMF. Uh, they have a, we call them a preventive dose, whatever the doses are written there. When you say high dose of antioxidant, you have to talk talking about the 10 grams of vitamin C, yeah. a combination. We have proposed that combination. You have to talk a 1600 or 2000 international unit of vitamin E succinate. This is the way we design, define it. But here is what we have, uh, we have proposed this idea and we have published several articles mm -hmm. Uh, this 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 is at this moment there's experimental data available but not the human data is that high doses of a multiple antioxidant yeah. can kill cancer cell but not normal cell mm -hmm. and for a long time i i bothering me how i can explain it because and for low dose of antioxidant will do what you said it has either no effect or actually we have demonstrated in a cell culture model, it has stimulates the growth of cancer cell. So we never recommend anybody who is going therapy or has active cancer, our, our preventive dose, we never do that. However, what a high dose antioxidant does. So finally, I found out while I was researching it, that the cancer cell require two nutrient for survival. One is glucose and one is glutamine. If you name cell culture model, if you deprive them either with glucose or glutamine, 100% will die of a starvation because they use glycolysis as a source of energy. And in glycolysis process, one molecule of GP, the glucose generates only two ATP. But if you go through mitochondria, then it in 18 ATP. So it is very inefficient. So they have to take a lot of glucose to survive. <clears throat> Are you there, Dr. Prasad? So, so, so it is. It is a lot of. Uh, uh, so, the, so what happens? Then I said, okay, let us see if high dose. Somebody has done research that high doses of antioxidant can block the entry or uptake of glucose and glutamine in cancer cell, but not in normal cell. And indeed, this is what we found. So, so now we can explain. Before it was experimental data that high dose of antioxidant kills cancer cell, but not normal cell. High doses of antioxidant increases the cell killing effect of chemotherapeutic agent as well as radiation therapy on cancer cell, but not on normal cell. So now I'm comfortable to explaining that. And so we have submitted a patent on this issue and if patent get approved, which we will know in a month, then we will run a double blind clinical trial on this issue to demonstrate this principle. But right now it is only experimental data showing what I'm talking to you. Yeah. And when you say high dose antioxidants, you're, 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 you're saying a multi-type a multi yes 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 not a single antioxidant like no no i'm talking about multiple oxidant you know so somebody for example you know some cancer patient said i said well you talk to your oncologist but i will define uh, say four to five times more than preventive dose say uh, emf radiation i mean emf that we have uh, micro daily emf um, four to five times of preventive dose uh, you can you can do it uh, you can be defined as a, as a roughly defined it, but in my pat patent we have given a specific amount of micronutrient five all 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 micronutrient antioxidant. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used this uh, micronutrient under the tongue in a sublingual delivery? No, I, I never did because you know it, it is only needed it if you can't absorb it, and as you know if you put it there it is rapid absorption. So now uh, we have a. Uh, Micro daily EMF has a hydroform, which is about the same that it will be absorbed quickly. You know, you don't drink all at one time, you are drinking slowly Sorry. and within 15 minutes. Because also, you don't want to leave the once you made this water soluble in water, and then you they are very they get easily oxidized in the presence of air and light. So, you want to keep it, uh, drink it within a 15 20 minutes, and mm -hmm. that, that is equivalent to absorption through the uh, not quite equivalent, but 
Uh, actually, it could, could be better because if you put it here, still it, it takes time. If you have a powder, it takes a little bit of time. <laughs> okay. But it so, tastes terrible for me. <laughs> so so I'd rather have a hydro, hydro form of micro daily that we have. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I tasted it. It tastes very good. So I think, you know, for those of people who can't like, don't like for whatever reason, biological effect in the end is same. All right. And so what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, Dr. Prasad, it sounds to me like you have a recommended daily dosage, which is a maintenance dosage. Yes. EMS. Then Dr. Court's going to re recommend a pre and post radiation. Yes. Protocol. And then yes. you have another protocol for those who are going through radiation and cancer treatment. That's right. Yeah, that's a di totally different for which there is no human data, only experimental data. But okay. for other one, we have now, we can claim that we have a human data for radiation. Right. And also in, in, in a European study that we mentioned, they did not treat after radiation. But what Dr. Cote is suggesting correctly, that you also treat after radiation. Why? Because earlier, when I was a graduate student, they thought that it lives only for milliseconds. Free radicals, when they form, they get immediately destroyed. But now some people have reported, a, a, a friend of mine, that some free radical after radiation lasts four or five hours. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat them as well, take care of them too. So we always say that if you give it both pre and post one dose, then it will be optimal protection. Mm -hmm. Dr. Prasad, I know that you remember when we did the, uh, we did, we actually did a sublingual test, um, Dr. Downs with three capsules under, we did a heart rate variability and then dissolved three capsules under the tongue of the client and then retested. And in 24 minutes, we had a change in all parameters from 13% to 77%. That's so, amazing. That no, but a, uh, it will be worthwhile comparing the testing, testing, comparing, say, hydro versus what you are already observe when you have a data. Right. So and then the one that you were just talking about, Dr. Prasad, with the with the extended period of time, the five hours, that was on a CT scan, wasn't it? Yeah, CT scan, but he immediately did it. He, he did only post-radiation, uh, pre-radiation. He did not do post-radiation. He would have done protein uh, post-radiation, Probably you would have a better than 58% reduction. Mm -hmm. Very good. Dr. Downs? Nope, that's great. Um, so, uh, Dr. Prasad, I'm going to have uh, Jet go ahead and talk a little bit about some of your work, and 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 and, and then you could chime in there with what when she's mentioning these things. And then at the end, we're going to have Dr. Uh, Dr. Court present the radiation protocol that he's recommending for offices. So go ahead, sure. Jet. Go ahead and share what you want to share. Yes, and you know, it was fascinating that you guys on this call get to hear a, um, a the, the cancer um, treatment for cancer with a high dose micronutrient patent pending. And yeah. most people, I mean, that is a really, I mean, it's very special that we're just, we, that, that he shared that, but there, that we're talking about today um, in his clinical studies and his peer reviewed work. Um, that this micronutrient formulation, this one formulation, um, can protect it and repair against ionizing radiation. So let's go ahead and walk through a couple slides and and just walk through, let me see, how long it took Dr. Prasad to do this one formula, okay? okay. And it started um, back in 2001. And in here, Dr. Prasad conducted 17 lectures um, walking the halls of Congress until he finally got 12 and a half million in funding for this for this one formulation that was meant for our soldiers to protect them against ionizing radiation, bio warfare, and extreme stress. And so it took a long time. And then how many years from 2001, Dr. Prasad, they came yes. to you and asked you to develop that? Yeah, and yeah. Then you actually through the, the the animal studies and then the human clinical trials, 14 in total on one formulation was approved in 2006. This formulation is the only formulation that I know of as a biochemist that is clinically proven to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation simultaneously. And um, this is the original packaging. It is. So this was what the military was given, um, the military micronutrient formula. And it is a two-a-day dose, morning and evening. 
And it was, he actually got um, an additional 12 or 11 and a half million in funding. So it was 24 million in total on one formulation. So we'll stop that share. It's really important for people to understand this took a long time. This is, uh, his body of work is very profound. And um, here are just a few of his books. And um, I have many of his textbooks, but some of these textbooks are currently being used in medical schools, teaching them um, the how to use um, a multiple micronutrient approach. And, and I want to say this, here's many of his books, especially on radiation. Dr. Prasad, I think the one thing that to really help um, simplify this is that most of the research out there were on single nutrients or micro or antioxidants. And you were the first to um, over 40 years ago, discuss this a specific multi, multi micronutrient approach with a set formulation. It's not on one thing. And so you really went a different route and all the other research out there when people are looking at at the micro daily formulation, the original formulation missing, there's not really anything to compare it to because you were the first. And it wasn't until this year, you, you, you shared with me two different studies in 2023 that they have done a, um, a, a fairly large study on, um, on multivitamins and the elderly and how it helps. So they're coming along now and finally, you know, um, using his, uh, his approach and, um, on a multi micronutrient approach, not just vitamin E, you know, he discovered vitamin E succinate and we have to have both of those and we have that in the formulation. So here is some of his books. So you can see he's <laughs> very pedigreed in, um, in many topics in radiation. And then I wanted to talk, and this is really important and it's important to Dr. Downs. And he wanted to know why this product and why this one formulation is so different than anything else on the market. And Dr. Prasad, will you walk them through why you didn't add um, copper, iron, or manganese to your formulation sure. from your research? Yeah, uh, it is very well known, uh, this was not my discovery, that iron, copper is trace amount. It does call it is trace minerals. It's absolutely essential for your health. Deficiency can have all kinds of health consequence, health consequences. But but slight excess of these trace minerals is also dangerous. Why? Because it interacts with vitamin C and generates extensive amount of free radicals. And as a and if you take iron, copper uh, together with multiple vitamin, they will be absorbed better than in the absence of vitamin. And when they absorb better, that means see protein, binding protein for iron and copper gets saturated quickly. And then free iron is floating around. And free iron is interacting with the molecule like vitamin C and generating extensive amount of free radicals. As a matter of fact, in old days, one of the treatment of Parkinson's disease was the chelating of iron, iron chelator because it accumulates large amounts in substantia nigra in Parkinson's disease. And, and also that the, um, he, there was another paper uh, came out that high accumulation of a copper in the brain can increase the risk of Alzheimer's disease. And so, so dementia and, and all this kind of stuff. So we decided that why to add it? Even if you eat a junk food or any kind of salad that grows in the ground, you will have more than enough iron that is required for your body function, optimal function. So there is no need of giving until you have iron deficiency anemia or something, then you take iron with vitamin C at a different time and, and a short time. And when anemia is corrected, then you don't do it. So, so that's one reason why we did not. We also did not add a heavy metal. You see, most of the multiple vitamin has a molybdenum, zirconium, Palladium, and, 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 and we did not. Because again, if you take a salad or any kind of food that is grown in the ground, under the ground, you will have more that you don't need it. They have no biological function, but they are there, therefore your body has it. And excessive accumulation of these heavy metal are considered neurotoxic. So mm -hmm. I said, why to do all these things? We don't need it. Your body don't need it. And don't allow accumulation of these. And the reason is they accumulate uh, more rapidly. 
because body has no mechanism of excretion of iron, copper, or heavy metal. So once to go there, they are there. Only way you can get rid of, if you give a blood donation to somebody that needs it, that's the only way. Otherwise, body has no mechanism of excretion of any of these metals. And, and Dr. Prasad, that hmm. people take these every day. So they are producing, even if, if, they're, if you look at the back of your multivitamin, right? Yeah. Um, and most of those have those. And so they're, they're getting that in every day and they don't have a mechanism to get it out and then creating extra oxid, you know, huge amounts yeah. of radicals. Yeah, yeah, so there's no need. So yeah. there was no need for, and also this, this was C's right combination. But I mean right combination because most of the nutritionists or commercial nutrition people um, thinks that the beta carotene and vitamin A are same. No doubt that beta carotene is a precursor of vitamin A. One molecule of beta carotene will give rise to two molecules of vitamin A or retinol. But they also perform, each of them perform unique function that cannot be produced by others. For example, in case of beta carotene, it increases the expression of a gene called connexin gene and who produces a connection protein that helps two normal cells together. When cells become cancerous, they get lost. So when you treat the cancer cell with beta carotene, in this case, in a cell culture model, they restore that protein. So connection genes now re-expresses it, and then this protein now, now the cell becomes like a normal cell. But vitamin A cannot do it. Vitamin A can induce cell differentiation during development, you know, for, to various tissue, but beta carotene cannot do it. So I said, in order to take a maximum advantage, we have to add both vitamin A and beta carotene and treat them as separate ingredient. So that's mm -hmm. another unique thing that you will not find any place. Many places will say vitamin A from beta carotene. Well, that part of it is true, but, but not necessarily. And also, most of the commercial product will have a, uh, a vitamin E acetate. And uh, but as 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 Janet mentioned, I discovered in early 1980 that vitamin E succinate form is most effective as the anti-cancer agents. And we did a lot of study on that because it is more soluble than vitamin E acetate. Acetate, and it, therefore it can enter the blood-brain barrier more easily into the brain than say vitamin E acetate. This is just one example. And vitamin E acetate is important because they quickly get converted to alpha tocopherol, which is the form our body uses it. And vitamin E succinate, first, it has unique effect of its own. Second, it gets slowly converted to alpha tocopherol, that is the form body uses it. So we added a both form. And then many of the commercial product will have just those which are have a we take uh, that, that, that we take from the diet, vitamin A, C, E, but they don't have those antioxidants that our body makes it, like glutathione elevating agent, for example, alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, and so so these are the major kind of differences uh, that we have, and and the right combination. That's why it is very important. For example, selenium. Many times you add selenium oxide. Selenium oxide is very poorly absorbed. So we said, no, we will give selenomethionine. This is the form body uses it. That's why it is very important how we do it. The quantity is very important. Even before we tested it, my central issue was, has to be safe. Mm -hmm. And as you know that now we have a IRB, Institutional Review Board approval from Navy, from Army, both. Not any, 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 any formulation can claim that, that we have a IRB approval from Navy, as well as from army. From army it was because we were running the cl clinical study on a, a diabetes. And of course, most of our study uh, in a, a Navy was done in a NHRC and Naval Medical Center in San Diego. So, so it was, so, right, safety is very important, but turned out it is not only safe. It, to, it took nine months before IRB said, yeah, I think you, you, at least you can try it, test it. So before even testing it, it took nine months by the time we submitted application. And so it is not, not only safe, 
but they are very also effective. There, uh, Dr. Prasad, uh, it sounds like a conductor of an orchestra, what you're doing here. <laughs> um, you, Professor, I keep talking very, sorry about that. Yeah. And that's very nice because, uh, and then also you have uh, invented a gummy formula for children. Yes, and yes. It, and it's a little different. Tell us how that how that's different from the adult formula. Well, I, I, it is, conceptually it is the same, except the doses is, is a... Um, uh, as pertinent to safety for the children. So doses are different, but the conceptually all the ingredients are same that we have in EMF, but except the dosage is small for the children. And it has very little sugar, but if you go to buy another kind of gummy, most of them doesn't have any of those micronutrients that we have. No. And so I think for children, also I feel that because in children, especially you are, when you are growing, when children are growing, even deficiency of one micronutrient can interfere with their development. Yeah. It is important to have a micro, sufficient amount of micronutrient in their body for physical as well as mental and emotional development. So it is very important. And diet, di these days diet, as you know, the, when the children don't have a balanced, even balanced diet. But the teen, the pre-K or kindergarten or anything, so I think it is a very cheap way of providing the nutrition, minimum nutrition that the children need for a optimal growth, mental, physical, as well as emotional, and also immune function. Don't forget, yeah, we have done tested our product. Also, immune function is very important. Okay, Dr. Porter, you... would you please explain the uh, radiation protocol that you're recommending for the offices? With all this information, thank you. Yeah. Hang on, I'm gonna. Dr. Court. Yes. Hang on, I'm just pulling this up real quick, Dr. Okay. Downs, the, the picture about the diabetes, because Dr. Prasad did a clinical study um, at Walter Reed on diabetes, and then he also has a patent, um, his patent on this formula for the treatment of diabetes mellitus. Dr. Yeah. Court, will you walk through this real quick and then the protocol? So, um... I met this this patient in uh, early May at a doctor's office, and uh, we struck up a conversation throughout the day. And after the conversation, he became a customer and started taking the micro daily uh, EMF and the probiotic and the collagen. On May 31st, he called me and he said, "I'm not able to get a hold of my medical doctor. I'm not able to get a hold of my chiropractor. My toe is turning black, and I'm terrified." And I said, well, send me a picture. The picture on the left is the picture he sent me. And I I was a little stunned. I didn't expect that because he had the toe removed five years ago and it's never healed. And he's had extreme problems with the toe for the last two years going to a wound specialist for the course of five years, but almost uh, you know every other day for the last two years. So I made a few phone calls and we came up with a protocol to take three of the micro daily cap EMF capsules, the ones found in this formula. And we took three of those capsules and broke them open and dissolved them or put the, combined them into a poultice with a tablespoon of organic coconut oil. We applied that to the four by four and he rewrapped his foot. And daily we were seeing dramatic changes in his toe. In seven days, we have, it, it, really amazing healing. I mean, I don't even know how to put it to words because every day he sends me a new picture. Um, and and he had he had very he had very high diabetes. His fasting blood sugar would be so high sometimes it wouldn't read. It was over six hundred. Yeah. And he's lost hundreds of pounds. And so when he started this product, he was taking the recommended dose, which is three capsules twice a day, the probiotic and collagen internally for for four weeks before this happened. So Dr. Prasad knows that they, he had an internal dose and then this poultice. But I want you to know the thing for me as a biochemist, his blood sugar is now at 140 and going down. It's actually 135 this 135 morning. 135 today. So I want everyone on this call to know people that have you know very severe diabetes can reverse this and now you know, their his body is starting to heal, and then his number is getting closer to um, 
an optimal number. So Dr. Prasad, what are your thoughts about seeing this, this healing? Yeah, I mean, the, again, I think, you know, not only that, but uh, immune function here plays a very important role because as you know, there are dead tissue. There is a dead tissue because macrophages and uh, is not removing all those cells. And also the uh, um, lysosomal activity is very poor. And so, so in this case, you know, once you put locally there, not only he was already taking internally, his immune system is uh, stimulated, but putting by locally, there were a lot of macrophages lying around inactive. And because there are too much pro-inflammatory cytokine that was killing these cells, and these are all necrotic tissue. So now by giving locally, it has stimulated again, not only local, uh, uh, the uh, macrophages activity, but also uh, immune function. Now the immune cells say, okay, now it looks like a good place to some, some more competent macrophages to remove the dead tissue. And when dead tissue gets removed, then anti-inflammatory cytokine try to help more to heal the wound. So there are- so it's so important to remember, you know, this is not a healthy man. He's uh, 525 pounds. He's six foot seven. And, um, uh, you know, he's continuing to lose weight. But the amazing thing about the product is that this is a dose that we gave from the inside out for six weeks. And then we can also apply it from the outside in. And this is not a one and done case. We actually have many cases of wound healing but this is one of the most profound. So, Jack, can you pull up that information that Dr. I can. Downs yeah, wants I've only, to talk about? I have only a few yeah, minutes. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Yes. You know, Dr. I'm going to bring it to this really quickly. Dr. Prasad and I spoke about um, x rays because I used to take x rays in my clinic. And I came to him with a protocol um, when I was shooting x rays. And, and he said, You know, Dr. Court, I think that this is going to have a profound effect. I've revamped the protocol and it's this. Uh, we give a dose prior to the X-ray, a dose following the X-ray or CT scan, and then we follow it up with a two-day dose prophylactically for uh, both adults and children. And Dr. Prasad, since I still have you on the line for one minute, mm -hmm. what do you think that the... Um, what do you think the radiation damage and repair would be, being that they get a full day dose and then two prophylactic day doses? Yeah, I mean, that would be okay. One would be sufficient, in my opinion, because these people also should take a, a, a our regular, you know, preventive dose of hydro uh, for the rest of their life. But these but are whenever, But if they can't afford it or whatever, it, at least they can do that much. Um, for radiation protection point of view. So I think uh, that would be okay with me. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Prasad. We appreciate you immensely and we're so grateful that you would be able to be on this call with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, is this this, is is this slide completely taking up the, the screen? Yes, you can see it. Yes. I can see it very well. But so this is my preferred customer monthly subscription program. Um, actually, let me grab the other slide jet for me. I think it's the one right behind. Uh, no, it's not that one. I sent you another one. Um, I'm sorry. One moment, please. I... No problem. Okay. Take your time. And this is Dr. This is really implementing Dr. Prasad's Pamara, right, Dr. Prasad? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the one. That's those are the two that you gave me, Dr. No, I, ga I gave you a treatment. But anyway, let's go back to that first one. I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't, I, I only have those two, Dr. Port. So no, I apologize. Let's go back to this one, please. Okay. I'm sorry. It's the other one. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to just talk it through and then I'll explain how this can be utilized in the clinic. So we have the EMF formula. And um, go ahead and just put me on the screen. We have the EMF formula that actually was created um, about three years ago to protect us not only from ionizing radiation, but from non-ionizing radiation. Oh, yeah, I have to go. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Be well, Dr. Prasad. Thank you. 
And so uh, in my x-ray protocol, as Dr. Prasad was saying, we have, we have DNA, double strand DNA strand breaks in the lymphocytes. And, you know, we've kind of moved as dentists from the x-ray to the cone beam, which is much more serious, as he said earlier, 10 times the amount of radiation and it's to the head. Mm -hmm. So the protocol is this, we uh, just in the last week came out with micro daily EMF hydro. And what hydro is, is it's a stick pack like this. It's very simply administered. What we do when the patient comes into the office, is we the office staff will make them a EMF hydro to protect them from the exposure that they're going to be getting in the clinic. It's done just like this. So I'm, I'm thinking they should use a small bottle, but there's their dose. And they drink this before they go in for their, um, for their procedure of their, uh, their exam. Mm -hmm. and before they take the x-ray. So it's very simple. It tastes like lemonade and it's very quickly absorbed. I actually think that they could absorb it even faster if they swished it around in their mouth a little bit before they went and had the x-ray. And there's also no medication contraindications of any kind. There are absolutely no medication contraindications. Following the appointment with the dentist um, and on their way for checkout, we're going to give them another bottle of water with another stick pack. And that will give them a full day dose in a concentrated time, which I think will be very effective. And then we're going to give the patient four more sticks of the EMF hydro. The reason for this is two sticks is equivalent to a one day dose. So they'll take one stick in the morning and one stick in the afternoon. Now, my theory is when, uh, when the front desk says, Mrs. Jones, Dr. Downs wants you to, to have another bottle of the EMF Hydro to protect you from the procedure that we did today. And he's asked me to give you two more doses, one for tomorrow that you'll take one in the morning and the afternoon, and one for the next day that you'll take in the morning and the afternoon. And this is to protect you from the non-ionizing radiation that you will have in your home and also your workplace. Mm -hmm. And then we're quiet. And Mrs. Jones may say, well, what do I do after that? Well, you become a customer just like all of us here in the clinic. That's the adult program. The child's program is similar. The child is also going to get an EMF hydro, the adult dose, because children are much more susceptible to these types of rays, the, the uh, CT and X-ray. So they're gonna get a small bottle and drink the lemonade down. They're also going to get a dose for uh, after, the, after the appointment. And then they're going to get the EMF gummies. And the EMF gummies, when they order it from the company, they get a bottle. Uh, the dose for a child is two gummies in the morning and two gummies in the afternoon. This is the pack and it's cellophane and ziplocked and sealed. But what's really nice about it is it has all the ingredients on the back. So the cost of the procedure for the clinic, the adult procedure is uh, $8.34. And the child procedure is $6.09, which brings me to how does the clinic make money? Is that what you were asking, Dr. Bell? Well, yeah, I, I, I do think that we're all in the business of not only helping patients, but we have to stay in business. Okay. I'm sorry. We have to stay in business as part of the part of the way we serve people. Correct. Correct. Um, okay, so the next slide. I'd like I have, to see how that benefits you and the staff. Thank you. Okay, very good. Yeah. Want this one back up now? Um, this one, yes, please. So, I don't know if you can see me. The um, <clears throat> This is what I have suggested for patients when they say, what do I do 
when I run out of that second day dose. And the staff says, well, you become a customer just like we are. I put together two uh, possibilities of, of protocols here. In a clinic setting, you know, I don't know how many, how many patients a, a normal dentist office sees, but I think between the doctors and the hygienist, probably 40 or 50 is probably a pretty reasonable number. Is that correct, Dr. Downs? Well, if you wanted to be conservative, uh, you could say that the uh, one hygienist would see eight to 10, a dentist would see anywhere from 10 to 12. Okay. We'll so I put together two yeah. different scenarios. One scenario would be that Mrs. Jones would say, um, I would like to get two boxes of the microdaily EMF hydro for myself and my husband. And the box of EMF hydro is um, $83. So the cost is $166 with tax and shipping. Are you sitting down? No, it's just going to pull. Okay. Um, the second scenario, so that would be one patient in the morning. The second scenario would be a mother child and they would order a box of the EMF hydro and a bottle of the EMF gummies. The cost of that would be 133 and shipping. So for that day, the, the cost would be $300. It's actually 299, but I rounded it up to 300 for simplicity's sake. And um, you're paid, the doctor's office is paid weekly on those sales. So if we take 300 times five, that's um, $1,500 and that's paid weekly. Let me just. Do you want me to stop this? Uh, no, I want you to bring up the next screen, please. Hold that. Oh, I want to show you something here really quickly before I do this. When we look at that screen, oh, thanks. It's okay. Um, so in the first month at $300 a day, paid weekly, it will be a $6,000 month of just two customers a day. So I extrapolated that out. Month one is $6,000. Month two is $6,000 plus the doctor will make 30% of the previous month's subscriptions, which equals $1,800. As long as the doctor has over, uh, over $3,000 in sales, and on the previous slide I had that listed. Let me see if I can pull that up. Here on the right-hand side, you can see on those percentages, if there's between $100 and $500 in sales, it's 10%. Five to 1,000 is 15. 1,000 to 1,900 is 20, and, and so forth. So that doctor had, um, sorry, that doctor had $6,000 in sales just with two customers a day. The next month, month two, they're going to have $1,800 in um, previous month's subscription bonus. So that month, they're gonna get paid $6,000, plus on the 10th, they're gonna get another $1,800 check. Month three, same thing, but now we're at $9,600. Month four, 11, four. Month five, 13,200. And month six, $15,000. For a total over the course of six months on what I think is a very conservative two people a day, it's uh, $62,800 as a subsidiary income to the clinic. Yes, ma'am. Jet, will you grab my, my um, paper, sir, please? Okay, like I said, this is a retail program. You don't have to inventory this product. They buy from the company. Is that right? You know what? They're buying it at a cu- as a customer. They buy it for the same price that you and I buy it for. Yes. Okay. So it's it's not retail. They're actually getting it at at wholesale. Okay. At the cost you get. That's right. That's correct. That's correct. And, and you you advocate splitting some of this profit with the staff. Is that correct? Well, I do. You know, in my clinic, um, we decided that we would split those weekly bonuses 50%, 50-50. All right. But that's and, up to the office. Sorry? 
that's for the office to decide what that percentage would be. That is for the office to decide, but that's what worked well in my clinic was the staff was all on board because they knew that, you know, weekly they were going to do a profit sharing. Sure. Now I put together the costs and I thought I had that written down, but I think I might've not given that slide to Jonah. So I'm just going to share it with you really quickly. I put together a program for the dentist to get started with. And I think that a, a really good start for them that doesn't break the bank is uh, 15 boxes of the EMF Hydro sachets. Mm -hmm. There's 60 sachets in a box. Mm -hmm. And the cost of that this month, um, actually we have a um, buy two, get one free. So for that $166, they actually get three boxes which brings the cost down to $53 a box. So um, if they order this month in the month of June, I suggested that they get uh, five of the three box specials. Okay. And um, that will give them 900 units that they can use with each patient. They'll have plenty of units of the EMF Hydro. And then for the children's sample, these are really great and simple to hand out. You just hand out two of those with my protocol. I suggested six boxes of that. Um, and that is, uh, these, these cost, they're $63 for the, uh, for the box. And so I suggested six of those. The total for the clinic was uh, 1000 I'm sorry, I take it back. I think it was 1,000, um, about $1,130 for this starter. Now, clearly money is gonna be coming in quickly. I think that two customers a day is a very reasonable number. If they decided to do one customer a day, they wouldn't quite hit that 3,000 benchmark. So they would get 25% on their second month, but then you know they would be back, they would be up to that 3,000 benchmark pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And other questions? No, that's really good. I, I think that uh, uh, I think it's a reasonable start to cost, and I like the fact that it's just a retail customer program. And even people that don't want to continue to buy, you're protecting your patients, which is a standard of care that you're upgrading for, which I think you know, that would feel good. Yeah, I, I look like I'm disappearing. I don't know if you can still see me. Yeah, uh, you're you're lo we're losing a little bit of you. You look like a ghost. Well, there. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, yet I'm ghosting. Yeah. Well, um, I'm yeah. sorry. Shirley, do you have any questions for them? There we go. I do have a couple of questions. Um, one is how does the patient know? That they're that they're improving. What can they tell um, aside from that that traumatic wound healing? Can a patient know that something is happening that they're um, not being affected by the radiation? Well, we're all affected by radiation, surely. Um, you know, there's our world has changed so much in the, since 1999 when Wi-Fi came out. My company, Dr. EMF, really specializes in what we can do about that. If we have routers and microwaves and cell phones and laptops, we're all being exposed. Recently, um, I was in uh, Virginia and I met with uh, Senator Robert Kennedy's attorney who won ap the appeals, the second appeals against the uh, Federal Communication Committee because there are are no safety standards for EMF radiation. There are no safety standards. I'm sorry, I'm phasing out again here. It's the, um, it's the background, it's your back. Yeah, I don't know why it's- If you want to turn off your- uh, Yeah, that, turn it off and just blur it. I don't know why. So, I mean, how does the, the patients are not noticing that they're being affected by you? It's you know what? Um, hey, Jet. Um, they, 
patients will notice, but they're being misdiagnosed. Okay. We have brain fog, we have insomnia, we have anxiety, we have depression, we have um, many different, I'm fading in and out and I can't figure out why. Um, we have many different symptoms that are associated with electromagnetic fields. We are all surrounded by electromagnetic fields. And so um, what they will, what most patients feel is a clarity, a mental clarity. They also sleep better. This patient that I showed with his foot, he started to lose weight quite quickly, actually. Within days, he started to lose weight because he's, we were feeding his body the nutrients that he needed. So there are many different symptoms that, that people notice. On surely, the I, surely, I don't think everybody's going to notice any difference, uh, just like anybody else who takes a, a nutrient. Uh, some people will notice something. Many people won't notice. Um, I guess it would behoove you to uh, explain that we all know and patients know that any kind of radiation is bad for you. They can use this to protect themselves. It has clinical science behind it. And that's really all. They're going to have to do some research on their own when it comes to whether they want to further buy this product. Well, there's no product like this on the market. No, there isn't. Period. Yeah. There's no product like this on the market. And there's last no. Week, last week I had um, a full body thermography. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to know if um, after using this product, you would be able to maybe see some changes or some benefits in that kind of technology uh, as, a, as a base point and then as a, you know, something that. People are so tired of taking pills. Did you know that there is now a thing called swallowing fatigue? Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to say a couple of things. Yes, that would be, um, we have a FLIR um, thermography camera, medical core research. And yes, mm -hmm. you can be able to see, you'll be able to see um, some changes there, which is fantastic. And I agree because as we age, um, and this is your area. A lot of these muscles, people are getting fatigued. That's why he just made the the um, the hydro formulation. Yeah. And so that, that's going to be a wonderful and uh, um, that we can be able to help the elderly and people that are having problems swallowing. And so I want you to know that 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 one product could be a real life changer for everybody on this call. So many people are having problems swallowing pills. Good point. Could it be that this could supersede like 12 other vitamins. People are just so yeah. taking this, so many vitamins anymore. It's just unbelievable. Right. Um, Shirley, that's a great question. This actually um this actually replaces all of their multivitamins. So the nutrients in this formulation are very, very complete. Go ahead, Jay. Well and Shirley, that's the million dollar question. A lot of things that people are taking, the quercetin or the extra coenzyme Q10 and all these things are in this and they are in the appropriate CQF, okay? And more is not better. When some people um, take more of a certain uh, micronutrient, Dr. Prasad and I talk about this, it's modulating your genes. And, and so this is a two-a-day dose. He didn't mention that, but all the research is on a two-a-day dose. And, and we know that that's really also important for our circadian alignment and our sleep that we have the appropriate building blocks. So I think these are really important points that you brought up, Shirley, that the, and we love the capsule. I mean, we, we have, we always have them with us. They're, they're our mainstay, but really a lot of the extra things that you were taking, you don't have to take anymore. It is in, it, this is really a comprehensive multi-micronutrient with, you know, a lot of research behind it. You know, one of so the, the things, go ahead. I was just going to comment that the micronutrients are what support the actual nutrients. So if you're getting the micros correctly, I think that they'll, they'll boost up whatever normal food you're eating to get the actual benefits from your FOOD where we're supposed to be getting from. And that's what we're missing from the, the vegetative foods that people are eating because the ground is so depleted. 
It so, is. you know, it's just a big bad circle right now. And this sounds like it could be um, a solution to that little wrinkle yeah. well, and, and, and cut down on all of this. It, it is. And I want you to think about Dr. Prasad is 88 plus years young. He just yeah, he looks great. Yeah. finished a textbook on diabetes that's this thick. It's going to be a game changer. He has peer, he has three or four peer-reviewed works that he's just finished in very prestigious journals such as Nature and Science. And you don't just get published in those. He is the pioneer in this field. And he's been on the product, you know, he made the product 40 years ago. Yeah. And he was, you know, one of the things he's very humble. He was personally asked by the Department of Defense, can you help us? But I want to come back to your question, Shirley, that you asked first. And that is, you know, we have to look in our in our electrical environment today at all the bees in the room. And so, for instance, um, you know, we don't know as doctors what the environment is like for our patients when they go home. And this is one of the things that that I've been telling chiropractors and so forth. You need to look in the mouth. You need to talk about snoring and and uh, sleep issues. But we also need to talk about what's going on in our electrical environment. You know, why are the children behaving badly? Why do they have such high anxiety? And it may be like my own daughter who had 5,000 students in her high school. How many of those students do you think have a cell phone? 5,000. How many of those students have a laptop? 5,000. How many of the teachers have phones and laptops? All of them. But most importantly, where's the router located? Directly above their brains. And so this is, and then they go home and they're on their laptop, they're on their cell phones. People don't shut their routers off at night. So do I think that they're gonna find that they're going to feel a significant difference? I do. And I think that this is the greatest opportunity for dentistry to step into this and lean into this and start to help people not only in the clinic, protecting them from ionizing radiation, but then taking that extra step like we did when we brought in flossing and um, you know fluoride toothpaste with Captain Kangaroo. Um, you know, this is that step that we lean into and we say, look, we wanna protect you at home from your electronic environment because there are no safety studies. It's been proven. And the FCC is just going to drag this thing out for another decade, but they're in a, they're in a heap of hot water. Dr. Downs. No, I think that's uh, very well summed up. Um, I, I do think that we need to protect our patients in the office. That was the main focus of this seminar. We could do another one on diabetes alone. If you'd like to do that sometime, uh, Russ. Absolutely. Yeah. So Shirley, did we answer all your questions? I believe so. Thank you. I'm glad to in on this. I worked really hard to be sure that I was, I even had coffee this afternoon so I could stay awake and update. <laughs> well, we had a few people come in and out while you were staying on the whole time. So, but I do, there's a lot of people who want the recording of this seminar mm -hmm. and I will be able to get that to them. I'm also going to put it in the curriculum of the Sleep Balance Academy in the EMF formula area where Russ has a complete uh, lesson program on our on our website so thank you dr dr, Russ. dr. downs you yeah. also have my link to doc talks which is uh and you can post that that is an everyday call that is at noon central time 11 o'clock mountain 10 o'clock pacific yeah if people want to get a hold of you and purchase this product uh how do they do it well started. uh i would have i would suggest they go to doc talks or uh, it's it's our it's the webinar that I do every day the Zoom call. Yeah. Another way to get a hold of me directly is uh, an email, which you can post my email on here. Okay, I'll do that in a li little bit. But tell them what it is. Your email. My email is dr. Court K O R T at doctor d o c t o r emf.com and that's a that's a pretty good way to get a hold of me and if they contact you directly dr downs you can give them my phone number yeah i'll do that all right they will be contacting me i'm sure thank you very much for everybody everybody for getting on
Thank you, Jet, for your help. Thank you, Dr. Court, for your expertise. It's been a great seminar. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Good night, Be well. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Good night. Bye.